Hey, good evening guys. I wanted to do a video tonight to try out the 4K camera on my phone and stuff and um, just kind of sitting at home recovering from surgery for the last while and stuff. Realized I hadn't put out a video in a hot minute. So I wanted to take a minute out to do it. <clears throat> so for this video we're going to be talking about emulation, why it's important and how it's preserving gaming culture and stuff. So before we get into the thick of it with you know, um, why hardware isn't always the absolute solution with things and why it's not always economic or even cost effective to sit there and invest in hardware. We're going to go ahead and invest a little bit of time into the backstory here. So I was on Twitter about, a, oh man, I want to say like four days ago. And I like to just kind of scroll through it, you know, see what everybody's doing, you know, and every now and then... Uh, <clears throat> Twitter suggests a tweet to me. I don't really like the function too much, but there's no real way to turn it off as far as I'm aware. So the tweet in question came from an influencer that has latched onto the Resident Evil community. And the tweet basically said that if you were playing games on an emulator, that you were not a real fan of the games. That's horseshit. Here's why. Um, when I was in my early 20s and stuff, I used to be a hardware snob. I'm a little bit of an older woman, you know, most of you guys are in your 20s and 30s. Um, I used to be on the train of hardware snobbery where it was like, if you're not playing it on like a picture tube, you're not getting the full experience. If you're not playing it on, you know, X console, you're not getting the full experience. You know, like I was like this for a very long time and stuff and... You know, because that's what I had heard all the time from a lot of my friends and stuff, especially in the PS1 and PS2 days, you know. And so when everything started transitioning over to flat screens, we had various issues like um, since a lot of games were built around picture tubes, there would be this weird delay between the console itself and the flat screen. So I use a lot of emulators. Um, I enjoy them immensely. I love playing all the old games and stuff. Um, a lot of the <clears throat> emulators I use are currently on my Mac. So my favorite one is one called OpenEMU. We're going to go ahead and open it here. And we're going to go ahead and make it big. And so you're going to go ahead and see all these titles and stuff. You know, uh, this is the PSP section. You know, and then when you, um, when you pop up over here and open up the PlayStation section, you know, just... Tons of titles, left and right. Just titles as far as the eye can see. I haven't had a chance to uh, port over my Sega Saturn or my Sega Genesis and SNES games yet, but I'm working on it, ordered a dongle, it should be here pretty soon. So, you know, you're, you're looking at all these games and stuff, and you're probably thinking to yourself, fuck, this is, these are a lot of titles, you know. And so the question I want to ask you is, what do all these titles have in common? For starters, you would probably say something along the lines of they're all games made in the 90s and early 2000s, or they're all PlayStation games, or these were all games that uh, came out when 3D was first getting off the ground. And you would be right to a certain lesser extent. The thing that all these games have in common is that I owned all of them at one point in time. Oh yeah, I was a hardcore collector for many, many years. I had like shelves and shelves of stuff. Just tons of games all the time. And I enjoyed being a collector. You know, it was back when I was a lot younger. You know, I was a hardware snob. You know, I had the Sony Trin uh, Trinitron, sorry, that's speech impediment. I had the Sony Trinitron television and stuff because it had the best picture and I had original hardware because you know there was no other way to play it even though emulators were really getting off off the ground at that point in time so all these games have one thing in common which kind of landed them in this emulation program uh open emu that is i played them until they wore out yeah so all these games are based off of cds and with time for those that don't know um CDs as well as laser lenses eventually succumb to what's called rot. With laser lenses, it's when the electronics start to wear out and start to rot and stuff, robbing it of its ability to actually go and read the disc. And with 
CDs, what happens is you have that aluminum layer, well, that foil layer on the top, which is where all the data is stored. And as time goes on, it oxidizes. And with old PlayStation games, it starts to get this kind of uh, white fog on it. With old CDs from like the 80s, they start to turn this really disgusting pitted copper color. You know, CDs don't last forever. You know, they never really have. I remember getting uh, CDs in the 80s, and then by the late 90s, they were already starting to rot, prompting me to start going digital with a lot of my music, because as long as I have, you know, a master backup on a couple of thumb drives, I'm always going to have access to that music. So what prompted me to port all of these titles to my emulator and stuff is simply because it was a huge issue of cost. I have owned, oh man, four copies of Resident Evil 2. I had one copy from release day. It eventually succumbed to rot. Went out, got another copy, used it last year, succumbed to rot. The rest of the copies after that went ahead, got them off of eBay. They were in good condition. They showed up. They already had fog going on on the disc. You know, they're already midway with uh, succumbing to rot. So the issue with this is not so much me buying them it's the point of it starts to feel wasteful after a time you know um i would go and i'd buy these games over and over again and the thing is is they're not cheap like what they were in the 90s they're not like 40 or 50 bucks a lot of these titles are like 85 90 dollars now and when you're blowing through games that fast the cost starts to go up quite a bit so another issue that i was having is that uh finding playstation parts because i had a um a classic gray PlayStation from uh, 1996, I think, and its laser lens eventually went out. Um, getting parts for these consoles is getting harder and harder. You know, it's it's just a really huge pain to sit there and to find parts for these consoles all the time. I still have a PlayStation 2. It wants nothing to do with CD-ROMs, and its ability to read DVDs is very quickly going out the window, but it's coming up on 20 years of life, you know. Well, hell, um, yeah, over 20 years of life. Um, so, you know, you can go online to eBay and stuff, and you can go and you can buy uh, parts that were taken out of working units, but the thing is, is a lot of the time they start to fall apart as well. You know, you can go and get used parts, but it doesn't really change the fact that a lot of these lasers were manufactured 20 years ago. So they're going to have age on them regardless. So... You know, it took me a little bit of time to grow up a little bit. Like I said, I used to be a hardware snob, and, you know, I was all about chasing that a best experience. Um, there was a couple things that actually happened. Uh, first, all my games started to rot. I think I had gotten 10 titles in before I had sat there and said, okay, you know, we should probably think about burning these games, putting them on an emulator just so my nephew can enjoy them when he comes over my nephew's a younger kid he doesn't remember playstation 1 he barely remembers playstation 2 you know he's just entering his teenage years so when i started ripping a lot of these games to my um to my emulator and stuff that i have it was mainly out of a point of conservation you know because i know that all these discs are going to start rotting at some point you know i know that they're going to be falling apart and fogging up and then you know, constantly having to repair the PS1 because the parts I was getting for it were old, but in quote, quote, good condition. You know, it just, it became like a really huge headache after a while. <clears throat> so, I ported most of my games, and I caught a lot of flack for it. You know, there's a difference between porting games that you know that are falling apart that you've owned and stuff, versus going and just downloading the title saying, you know, to hell with it, so to speak. And then playing it. Um, a lot of these games I have very fond memories of. This one, um, it was one of my first excursions into horror on the PlayStation. Very good game. You can't even really find it anymore. And then when you do, it's normally missing discs. It's a three CD game and it's just so hard to find these days. It's not easy to just keep going through and keep replacing games left and right and everything else. And you know, some of these games you can't even get anymore. I know um, with BioFreaks, you can't get it anymore. 
disruptor you can find it every now and then and then when you do it's normally really expensive because a lot of these games since they're old are considered um collector's items now you know they're considered vintage so the oh the price has gone up we're starting to see the same thing with the uh the wii and the wii u and so you can still get playstations on ebay and stuff ps ones you won't find too many gray ones but you'll definitely find like a lot of the mini white ones that they produced towards the end of the ps one's life cycle and that's great but for me i just i don't want to have to keep going and buying hardware all the time and then to make matters worse adapting it for a flat screen is not that great either it's it's a real huge pain in the ass i've tried upscalers and everything else um, either they give me this weird letterbox presentation or they look kind of grainy I know one of them had scan lines going up and down the screen, you know, so it was a little bit of a strange thing for me, you know, like I've, I've tried to adapt it and stuff and I've just, I haven't really been able to be uh, completely satisfied with the end result with a lot of the upscalers and stuff. So a lot of people, when they sit there and scream real hardware, I feel they're woefully ignorant of the fact that everything rots. Within the last five years, most of my consoles have started to rot. Um, they've all been taken care of beautifully. My PlayStation 1 got cleaned all the time. PS2 got cleaned all the time. My Genesis succumbed to the, um, the resistor problem where everything would just start to break down progressively. My SNES, the sound chip in it, finally gave out. Um it's it's just it's a real huge kind of a pain in the ass thing i mean you can you can go out and get it repaired <clears throat> and that's what i used to do like when they would wear out and stuff they would go and you know I'd, I'd have them sent out to be repaired and stuff and it just it gets really expensive and then to add to the issue we're running out of parts you know we have a lot of people that go and make uh, replica replacement parts but a lot of the time they have compatibility issues. I know the company that's making the replica lasers for the classic PS1s, they have compatibility issues because to fight piracy, Sony added a wobble to all these PS1 discs. And the idea was that since it had a wobble, a standard uh, disc drive would not be able to read it correctly, so you would not be able to copy it. And nowadays, you know, we um, we got around that like we typically do. And, you know, you can go and get ROMs of like all these games and stuff. You know, you can have them preserved, you know. So it used to be in the 90s, we used to have a slogan that was going on. Uh, it was an anti-piracy measure. And it was, don't copy that floppy. And the irony of it is, we screamed, don't copy that floppy throughout all the 90s. And nowadays, with so many games being lost, you know... Um, everybody's kind of being urged to copy stuff not so it can be um, played and pirated by everybody and their grandmother but because these discs wear out these cartridges wear out you know contacts on cartridges um, they can be fixed but it's a pain and a lot of the times it's not cost effective so I really kind of have to wonder what a lot of, the, of these influencers that talk about emulation are kind of rambling on about um rambling uh, god sorry um emulation is pretty much everywhere you know outside of programs like this emulation is pretty much everywhere i know that people don't really complain about emulation with the switch online service they don't care about it they're just playing the game i know that with the back compat systems on xbox again nobody's complaining that it's emulation they're just playing the game uh, same thing with uh, PSN's uh, PlayStation Classics selection that you can go and buy. Nobody cared that it's emulation by Sony. They were just happy to go and be able to play it, you know, revisit their childhood or maybe discover something new. Maybe they were getting into retro gaming for the first time. So I fail to understand why a lot of these influencers, they kind of sit around and if it's emulation on a computer, they whine about it. You know, they'll sit there and say that you're not a fan or you don't appreciate the game. But I find a lot of people that go and port games to these emulators and stuff and make backups and stuff. They do it because they love the game. I mean, if you really want to get down to brass tacks, if nobody gave a shit about any of these titles, they would have never bothered to back them up. Seriously, they would have never done it. 
these games would have rotted, they would have been lost to time, and that would have been it, you know. So what it really boils down to, I think, is it's just bad takes, you know, in all honesty and stuff. Um, there's a lot of benefits to actually using an emulator that I'd like to go over. Um, first off, your TV is not going to be able to supplement old hardware all the time. I know a lot of people, they're like, oh, my flat screen still has RCA jacks. Mine doesn't. Mine has component video and a couple of HDMIs and that's it. The component video is not able to be retrofitted via with the settings to use older consoles. You know, the um, I have a Nintendo Wii that is currently using it. Everything else is using HDMIs. You know, it's not easy to do that. Um, emulators can clean up games a fair bit. Um, a lot of people kind of overlook this, I feel. With a lot of these older games, uh, the graphics are truly horrible, but they were cutting edge for the time. You know, 3D was just starting to come out the door and stuff. So we actually have options for uh, filters. So we're going to go ahead and open up Resident Evil 3, one of my favorite games. You know, I'm, I'm a little bit of an old schooler. I don't bother to stretch my games. I still like that uh, 4x3 presentation and stuff. So I kind of like the simulator because it gives me a whole host of options. So I can either have it run in the original resolution, which is like a tiny little box on the screen, or I can run it in full screen. I prefer full screen because I can barely see five feet in front of my face. It really helps me out. But where things really start to, you know, get really, really nice is a lot of these emulators have options, you know, for like the uh, visual aesthetic and stuff. You can go straight CRT. You can do that old school sort of uh, dithering. You know, that um, you would see with like Silent Hill and stuff. You can do old school PSP filter, you know, if you really want that widescreen CRT look. And then, of course, you've got MAME and Motion Blur and everything else. And then the uh, various regions and stuff. I like uh, BRZ uh, Multipass Freescale because it does a pretty good job of upscaling the graphics a fair bit to where they look like a lot better, a lot crisper. With my eyesight being bad, it's just great to be able to sit there and have a cleaner looking image. You know, it just looks really, really good and stuff. Um, another thing that I actually really like about it is there is uh, support for modern controllers. I typically use a Switch controller, well, a Switch Pro controller, with all of my uh, with all of my stuff. But I like how you can go and remap all the buttons. You know, for all the consoles that I you know typically use and stuff, I can go and remap all the buttons. I can pick between keyboard and uh, normally the Switch Pro controllers right there, I can click it and then it'll remap it. You know, it does a really good job. And this emulator even supports Wii remotes, which is kind of nice as well. Because I'm pretty sure at some point my Wii's going to tell me to go fuck myself. So there's like a lot of advantages to emulators. I know with Silent Hill, the, um, oh god, the frame rate on it was so janky for like a long time. But it was really pushing a lot when it first came out and stuff. You know, the PS1 wasn't meant to really handle 3D graphics. You know, that was more of the N64 thing. It was um, built around it, if you would. So the one of the saving graces is I can go and I can load up uh, Silent Hill, assuming I can find the damn thing. I can load up Silent Hill, and the emulator gives it a frame rate boost. It's not running at 60, but it's definitely running at a stable 30. So it like with emulators and stuff, sometimes it makes the game run better. Other times it breaks the game. I know some games I have to restrict the frame rate that it runs at because if it runs at anything above 20 it'll break the game uh death trap dungeon was like that a fair bit so regarding a lot of these influencers that tell you you know emulation is bad you're not a fan they're full of shit gaming is meant to be enjoyed by everybody a lot of this hardware is not going to be around in 10 to 15 years i know that uh, when my neo geo went up I could not find parts for it, and a replacement uh, AES is roughly around 1100 and that's just the console, it's not even the controller and everything else, you know. So with these games, it's about preservation, it's about passing these down to like the newer generations and stuff, that way when they're whining about Call of Duty saying that the controls are horrible, you can introduce them to PlayStation 1 tank controls and you can watch them whine harder, you know. But all joking aside, you know, this is about legacy and stuff. I know Nintendo doesn't like people that uh, 
has a tendency to back up their games and stuff but with the n64 it was a durable console it's just those controllers wore out really really quick and you know we're kind of going through a retro renaissance so a lot of this stuff is coming back but it's not the same if that makes sense like i know that um there's a lot of replica playstation 2 memory cards but a lot of the time the playstation can't really read them correctly because they're either too big or they don't function right i know that with the uh, replacement laser lenses for a lot of the Dreamcasts because I played on the Dreamcast for a really long time. They don't recognize the disc correctly. I know that um, for the Genesis, when you started replacing capacitors and it with higher quality capacitors, a lot of the time the Genesis didn't know how to handle it. You know, it was just, it was really weird, you know, when you start going through and looking at like a lot of these, um, a lot of these various issues with hardware and stuff, you know, emulation proceeds to uh, look better and better and better. So I think for me, leaving behind being a hardware snob was a matter of maturity. You know, it was kind of the realization where I think it was like the second time I'd replaced my laser lens in my PS1 and it had burnt up because it wasn't running according to spec. I sat back and I said, you know, is it really that much better running it on a, uh, a CRT? You know, it's, it's like a sobering thought when you sit back and you actually think about it. You're forced to examine your own experience and you're like, is it really better? Yes and no. I found that the only thing that the CRT did better was it had that uh, response time. With CRTs literally being compressed gas, you know, as well as uh, same thing with plasmas, the response time on them is literally unrivaled. But with me having this uh, Sony television here, it's a KDL 55W900A, my response time is quite literally two milliseconds. What this equates to is when I use a Bluetooth controller, you know, to play these games, and this is in game mode, I don't really feel any delay. I just don't. And it's nice. You know, it's like the delay is so minimal that I can't even really recognize it. So I enjoy playing like a lot of these games, you know, I still revisit uh, Silent, Hero, Silent Hill here quite often. Um, Small Soldiers and everything else is for my nephew. He loves Spider-Man and Spawn and everything else. Uh, introduced him to Spyro the Dragon. And, you know, I still have like a lot of these games. The games that haven't succumbed to disc rot yet are packed up. The games that did succumb to disc rot, they, uh, well, they're in the trash. Quite literally, there's no use for them. They can't be recycled. You know, they can't be fixed. It's a permanent problem. It's a death sentence, if you would. So I wanted to cover the topic of influencers kind of getting into your brain a little bit. It's something I've been wanting to do for like a hot minute now. And I, I think it's so weird. Like I, I watch a fair about, amount of content on YouTube and stuff, you know, as well as upload it and everything else with the horrible clips that I make. And, you know, the thing is, is that... um they really, they, they have a tendency to get into your brain because like a lot of people when they watch uh, various influencers, it's because they're looking for their opinion. And I find that as time goes on, when you watch an influencer long enough, you stop questioning it and you just run with it. You know, I, I saw this a lot in the survival horror communities that I'm a member of for both Silent Hill as well as Resident Evil. Um, a lot of people would literally just sit there and they would have the opinion, uh, we'll take Resident Evil 4, for example. A lot of them have the opinion of Resident Evil 4 was a good game. It was a bad Resident Evil, though, because it went with the direct action approach. It didn't have that encroaching horror that the other Resident Evil titles that came before it had. And with influencers, a lot of them are kind of pushing towards, oh, Resident Evil is bad or good. There, There is no middle ground so i find that when watching the content from various influencers you kind of sit back after a while and you're like oh you know and you just mimic everything that they do there's not a lot of room for independent thought there i find the thinking patterns like this have a tendency to fragment communities that i love because it used to be resident evil had this very diverse um set of views it's like you had some that loved resident evil 4 you had some that hated I was of the adage of it was a good game it just wasn't a good resident evil and then eventually since a lot of these influencers have swinging power people kind of stopped accepting other people's opinions because you know a lot of the influencers would be like you know 
this is why it's bad. It's never going to be good. You know, I, I saw it a lot. It kind of ate the Resident Evil community alive. And so a lot of the people in the Resident Evil community, myself included, we have a tendency to stay away from the influencers that cover Resident Evil content because a lot of it is extremely biased or they have a tendency to look at through uh, rose tinted glasses, if you would. Um, another issue that has kind of popped up is with the Resident Evil community, we accepted a lot of the Silent Hill community bar none because Resident Evil and Silent Hill both grew up in the same era and they were both different reflections of the same genre with Resident Evil being a uh, a jump style horror if you would that you know you you got your shock and you know then it kind of passed through you whereas Silent Hill was psychological horror you know that other side of the coin that slowly built on you with just garish monsters and you know, we had other games that did this as well, like uh, Clock Tower was a meshing of the two. It was psycho horror as well as uh, jump horror. And then, of course, we have Alone in the Dark, which was uh, psychological horror a fair bit. And it had, like, the occasional jump scare. But I find that the longer a lot of these influencers are kind of... <clears throat> the longer a lot of these influencers are kind of latched onto these communities, there's really no um, unification. It's just straight-up division, more or less. You know, like the Resident Evil community is fractured now. It's like you either have to love this or hate this. There is no middle ground. And then when it comes to the unity with the Silent Hill community, which, you know, has the same boneyard, it's like, oh, well, we don't like Silent Hill because it's not like Resident Evil. So this has been going on for, oh, man, I don't know, probably about 10 years now. You know, and it just, it really hasn't gotten better. It's only gotten worse. So what I would actually like to ask is for gamers to enjoy their games again. To form their own opinions. To stop looking towards influencers for each and every little piece of information that they want. You know, like, if you're on the fence about a game, you know, go get a physical copy. Play the hell out of it. If you don't like it, just return it. You know, you can't quite do this with uh, digital unless you're on Steam, of course. And, you know, Xbox is kind of picking up the slack with that too a little bit. But don't be afraid of forming your own opinion. You know, don't be afraid of, like, going and playing a copy of Resident Evil 4 and being like, you know what? I really liked it. You know, like, I'm, I'm kind of strange with Resident Evil. I loved 1 through 3. I loved Code Veronica. Um, I even liked Survivor a little bit, even though I can easily recognize that survivor was dog shit didn't really care for four didn't like five six was just weird and then when seven rolled around it was a good game it was trying to be resident evil kind of missed the mark and then eight i haven't even played yet because it's like big titty goth vampire you know so i've been kind of avoiding it like the plague but yeah don't let people sit there and dictate to you how to enjoy your games if they don't like emulators to hell with it no, to hell with it just because they don't like something it doesn't mean that you have to not like it as well and a lot of people really forget this you know they don't really think for themselves anymore they just kind of log on to youtube you know go to their uh, media source of choice and you know brainlessly digest everything that's being tossed out in front of them you know tldr enjoy your games enjoy them in whatever fashion that you want to you know, don't let influencers tell you that you can't have an opinion on a game just because it's not their opinion or just because it's not the majority's opinion. You know, play your games how you want. Play it on original hardware if you can afford it. Play it on an emulator if you want. Play it back combat on any of those consoles. You know, you have options to sit here and play your games. Don't let people pigeonhole your experience. So, you know, it's I, I just I kind of get tired a little bit of seeing this out of the community and stuff like a lot of these influencers just breed tons of division and i really just don't care for it or they have a tendency to treat their um their opinions as literally the gospel which is not really that great either they they think very much so too highly of themselves so but yeah this is just my thoughts on emulators and stuff um personally i feel that emulation is the future hardware is not going to be around forever 
and the classic consoles they've released had really horrible emulators on them. Here's looking at you, PlayStation Classic. You know, just play your games, enjoy them, form your own opinions, talk to people, see if they have, you know, the same opinion, if they have a differing opinion. You know, go ahead and be like, hey, that's their opinion. Their opinion shouldn't impact your experience. Literally, it shouldn't. It's like walking around saying, oh my god, you know, my friend said that Resident Evil 5 was like the best game ever and I think it's the worst game ever, so he shouldn't enjoy his game because I didn't like it. You know, it's not the way to do things. So it really, it just gives me a lot of food for thought, I think. Uh, this was initially going to be a rant on a podcast that a friend was doing with me and stuff, and I wanted to bring it back to my own channel instead. I've been doing a lot of podcasts recently, and I just, I kind of got tired of it. So it wasn't really... Um, wasn't really something that I wanted to do. I mean, it's cool to go off and do it, but, you know, sometimes you just want to th bring things back to home, you know. So, um, I also have other plans. Uh, a couple of people have wanted to, they wanted me to go and do commentary for Sketchy Plays. I have picked out a mic, and once it's in stock, I will be buying it, and I will be doing another rendition of Sketchy Plays. Uh, there was people that loved it, people that hated it, I was a little annoyed with it, but it is what it is. So I'm not sure when I'm going to drop the version of Sketchy Plays that has commentary. I've been waiting on Amazon for a couple of months now to get a lot of things back in stock, but I guess we're just having issues with the supply chain and whatnot or various shortages for semiconductors and things of that nature. So this was just my thought on it. I wanted to push out a video while I'm just sitting here recovering instead of just laying in bed all day. So I greatly appreciate your time. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for hearing me for what I had to say, and I hope you guys are having a wonderful day.